So on the previous videos, we've seen how to take apart the carry case and uh, the tripod case, and now we're going to actually mount the control box onto the tripod. The tripod had its own video, which you should have seen already. If you haven't, stop what you're doing, go back and look at the tripod one. Uh, basically, it describes everything, including how to mount the uh, control box onto here. And so here we have the control box. You can see right here is the shoe. We have four rubber feet and also the power cord. The power cord is underneath to keep things clean. So basically we're gonna line this up more or less in the center. I hold it vertically like this. I bring it up to the tripod. I then move it into a horizontal position and slide it in place. That is by far the easiest way to do it. And then you tighten down that one nut and this thing's really nice and solid. So with that done, let's go ahead and move over to the, over the workings, the connections, and the basic how-to on the control box now. So we've got uh, a lot of different things going on and let's start with how to connect everything. On one side we have the audio connectors and they're going to be the audio input and the headphones so the audio output. Input output. And it says right on top headphones and audio in. And on the other side we've got a switch and that's for the frequency generator. Some units have it, some units don't. This one needs a manual switchover. Some of them have an automatic switchover. Uh, for those who don't use the frequency generator much, we decided to go with the switch. And so that is used in conjunction with this silver connector. And it's also regulating the frequency generator inside the unit. We have next to it the connector for the light bar. And Underneath this switch is the connector for the vibrations on the massage table or the transducers. And then finally, we have the power connector hanging underneath. So with the power connector, we have a piece that pulls down when you're ready to unlock it. So pull down to unlock. And it's pretty intuitive because this thing's hanging underneath. And it only lines up one way. And you're going to give it a good firm pull. And then it's snug because it locks it in place. So it's not going to come off accidentally. If it does, you didn't connect it right. So to take it off, you're going to take the lower half of this, hold on to it, and pull down. And then it comes out. And there's a little visual icon on it underneath. So again, if you're looking for it, snap in place, and it's good. You're really not going to hear a big audible click or anything like that. So power. Let's move over to the headphone area. We have the headphones with that larger one and a quarter inch connector. It doesn't fit in that hole, it does fit in this one. So no two connectors are alike on this system, and that's on purpose, so you can't inadvertently put something in the wrong place. Uh, you're not going to like destroy something. It can't be done. Uh, and here is the smaller connector for the music player. So we connect those two in, and now let's move over to the other side, where we have the next three plugs. and. With the connector for the light bar, it's an L angle again. Uh, we have two of these. One of them's for the massage table and the other one's for the light bar. So this is simply going to be straight up and down. It's going to sit in. It's going to lock in place. So you're going to hear it click. And if you don't hear it click, it didn't go in. Let's take it out. You're going to push on the upper control piece and pull it out. It takes a little bit of effort. It's designed for uh, military use, so 
It's a really sturdy connector. Push it in and it's good. Let's go to the next one. This is called a BNC and this is a standard audio video data connector. And so this goes into the silver plug. It might be black on yours, but this one is silver. And so it only goes in one direction and then it turns 90 degrees clockwise and that locks it in place. It won't come out. To undo it, turn counterclockwise 90 degrees and it pulls right out. And uh, I do not supply these to customers because the other side of it, we don't know what is needed. So if somebody needs something, I can send them a link on what the appropriate one is to get. The next batter up is the uh, connector for the massage table. This one is straight. The one that you're going to get is at a 90 degree angle. So it just goes And this one too has a pull down. And that's how you get it off. To get it on, it's going to sit in and turn. So it turns about 30 degrees. back, turn, and so these are all the connectors, that's it. It goes by really quickly. Uh, there is the SD card right here, and so this holds the information for the lights. It basically is the equivalent of like a DVD. So it plays all the light systems. And we have it available so you can swap it out in the future if there's something else available. Uh, while we're here, we can look at the two headphones. We have, uh, sorry, the headphones and the vibrations. So these are individual volume knobs for them. The headphones is in the middle, and then the vibrations is gonna be on the right if you're looking at it like this. Uh, what happens is if you push it, you're going to mute the music. And so you can push to mute, and it's a great system. On some units, these are going to be positioned in a different place. They may be remote, meaning that they're not going to be on the box with someone else. They do the same function, though. And I'm going to take some of these plugs out just for ease of moving this around. So let's go ahead and power this up. We've got power, lights, infrared, and UV. And then over here is the frequency generator. So the power button switches up. This goes green, and then it's going to light up. If everything is plugged in, you're going to start to see lights and things like that. For off position, for the lights and the UV, that's down. For the infrared, that's in the middle. Infrared has two positions on purpose. One of them is super bright and one of them is not so bright. Uh, so, you know, if someone's like, oh my god, that's too bright, but I still want them, you know, you turn it on the lower position. Uh, and uh, up top we have negative, positive program set. Negative slows it down, positive speeds it up. Program is for, obviously, uh, moving to the next light program, so you keep pushing the program and it's going to switch to the next, next, next light. Set is the memory for the program. So you find one you like, you hit set, and that memorizes it. The negative and the positive again are going to make it slower or faster if it's something that pulses and uh, rotates. So that's the long and short of it. We'll come back in a second with the light bar attached and all the other goodies. Very quickly go over the light system. And right now, this is mounted. Everything's plugged in, the lights are turned off. Uh, we simply turn on the lights in the top middle button, and the lights come on. They're going to automatically go back to the preset program that you memorized on the top of the control box. So you have the negative, the positive, the pro, and the set. The set memorizes. So to change the colors, go over to the pro, and press the red button. It's gonna change it to um, 14 different programs. So 
you, you don't need to memorize these. What you can do is go through them with a client and see which one resonates with them. There's no right or wrong with it. It's just whatever they're called to. And myself and, and my wife, we love the uh, violet one. Uh, sometimes I just go with all white though. It's, it's really up to what I'm feeling. Uh, when you find one that has a lot of movement to it, you can speed it up or slow it down by pressing the positive or negative. So those are the lights in the nutshell. I'm going to turn those off and we're going to go to the ultraviolet now. Ultraviolet, you can see it pulsating very quickly right now. And the ultraviolet is keyed into the frequency generator. So the faster the frequency is, or the larger the number, the less likely you're going to see this. Anything over about 33 uh, megahertz, you will not see. The eye cannot distinguish anything faster in flashes. But it still works. And so that's the ultraviolet. It's going into the crystal sideways. And then it's, uh, the crystal's taking that information and bringing it down. Let's go to the infrared. This particular one. We have infrared on the two end ones only. The uh, middle three do not have it on some units. We may have it on all of them. And so here is that infrared and we'll see what it looks like. That's on low power and that's on high power. So high power is really incredibly bright. It will light up a room. Do not stare directly at the red. We, you know, when it's on high, do not stare at the red. Use protective eye pillows. Um, on low setting, you can stare at it. There's no harm with that at all. And so we have it uh, a low and a high in case somebody doesn't want the full um, amount of power. And so those little lights, have fun with it, enjoy them learn them, just be with it. You know, you can't do anything wrong. You can choose a different color, you know, maybe um, you can do a session without the ultraviolet and with the red, or maybe without the red and with the ultraviolet, you know, play around with it. Um, it's your system to enjoy, to learn. Most clients are gonna have the ultraviolet, the infrared, and the lights turned on. Uh, most clients want the full brightness on the infrared. And so, there we have it. So here we have the mounting of the crystals into the Vogel holders. You wouldn't think that you'd need to mount something like this, but at least I don't. Uh, but there it is. And so the Vogel holders are designed around Morgan. And so what they're doing is generating energy when nothing is in them or when there's no electricity. Even when they're powered off, they're still generating energy. Uh, what they have is lots of different little micro crystals inside. They have um, coils of wire, they have uh, LEDs and all sorts of various stuff. They also have inside the casing, the um, epoxy itself, there's over 20 different types of essential oils in there. And so, it's a uh, very, very powerful uh, piece. And so you see this one comes right out. And uh, on this particular unit, you can see there's this little rubber piece and it just kind of flops around. What this is, is a safety. And so when you're looking at these, they're just gonna lightly go on about three quarters of the way up. And they're just designed around um, a secondary safety measure so it doesn't fall through. Um, the bottom ring, these push down pretty snugly until it's about halfway. And so here's the bottom ring and it's designed so it's um, asymmetrical. The bottom is going to be wider than the top. and. Um, the bottom actually sits into a groove inside the holder 
and these are, they take a little bit of work to get in, but then they're snug. So when you're inserting a crystal, what's happening is that crystal is expanding that rubber piece and making it really solid. So you can see this is actually upside down right now and it's not wanting to come out. Do not leave these like that. I'm, no. You need to keep these right side up. And so that is how to get them in and out. And so if you're looking at one and you're struggling with it and you're like, hey, that one's not sitting in there, then try one of the others because we have specific rubber holders designed for different sizes. And we try to keep it to about two or three different sizes. Um, that way there's less confusion. Uh, we can't get all seven the perfectly same diameter. We have tried in the past and the crystal manufacturers can't do it. So we have to use these uh, rubber surrounds and then you push them in and you're good. So after careful consideration of how to package these two rubber rings so there would be the least amount of confusion for you, uh, what I came up with is taking the rings that typically sit in the vocal holders out of those and packaging them together so there's the, the safety ring and then the um, ring that sits in the vocal holder. And so basically they get paired to each crystal. And um, what I did is wrote down on the crystal tops, really hard to see in here, but there's a letter G right there. And that coincides with this baggie that says G. And so it goes A through G. And um, basically what you're gonna be doing is when you're unpacking this and getting ready to put the crystals into the vocal holders, you're gonna take the Ziploc bags and you're gonna look for the ring that's fatter and thicker and you're gonna put that into the vocal holder underneath the way that we showed you in the video and it sits again in a notch and it's gonna take a little bit of work to get it in there but it fits snugly and then you're gonna see this smaller ring and again this ring is shaped um, with a fat side and a skinny side so the skinny side is going to go towards the crystal tip skinny crystals so they kind of match each other in their shape and um, what's gonna happen is once this is on first and this is already in the vogel holder and pretend my hand is the vogel holder and then these are gonna drop in place and then it's gonna create a protective collar for it and so that's how you put these together and then there's gonna be another bag that just has some extras in it and they're gonna be miscellaneous sizes in case one of them gets lost or something that there'll be an extra and so that's it and so as we turn these on you'll see the different lights that come on when uh, we push program on the top of the control box they're gonna go through about 13 or 14 different programs and really tune into it and see what is being called. When you're with a client, run through the programs and see what's calling them. Maybe it's the standard chakra colors. Maybe it's the running of the colors where we'll have different chakra colors going sweeping like this. Uh, Maybe it's, it's just all white. Maybe it's the blue with the flashing red that comes on. Uh, this one's actually blue and white, excuse me. And then this one is uh, purple and um, white. It's really difficult to see on the camera. It doesn't give me good contrast. Uh, here's an orange one. Multicolored. So, you know, play with it, have fun with it. And again, when you like one you like, hit set and it memorizes it. So those are the lights. Let's turn on the ultraviolet. And the ultraviolet, you'll see glow uh, ultraviolet and they're mounted inside, right inside here. And so the ultraviolet pulse to the frequency being played. And so what we're gonna do is quickly go over and change it so you can actually see them pulse So that pulsation 
adds another layer of information to the system. Turning off the ultraviolet, we're going to get into the infrared. On this particular unit, the middle and the associated shock rows on either side do not have the red. It's only on the last two on each one. And so when they come on, you'll see that they get full brightness right now. Full brightness. And that gets pretty bright. Uh, you don't want a client to stare into those at all. Do not stare into these. That's on high setting. Low setting, they can look. It's low enough that it's not going to cause any uh, blind spots with your eyes or temporary blindness or whatever it may be. You know, when you look at the sun too long, you're like, oh my God, I can't see. That sort of thing. Uh, we do recommend for someone to use a face pillow if it's on high. Do not look at these. And so, that is uh, the light system in a nutshell. By all means, play with it, have fun with it. It's designed for you to get a lot of enjoyment out of. Just one more thing, we promise to make this quick. This video is for the Theo X2 media player, which comes with your system. And um, basically what we have is the charging connector at the bottom in the middle, the port for the SD card, and what that does is uh, holds the information. It's really tricky for me to get out because I don't have any nails, uh, but basically you push it in and then it pops out, and we'll look at that in a minute. Here's the port for the audio cable, and that's where you plug it in to hear the music. On the top, there's nothing. On the right side, there's nothing. On the left side, we have a power button all by itself. And then the um, positive and negative or the, the up and down volume controls. So we're going to go ahead and plug this back in and then turn it on. And you hold the power button for about two seconds. And let's see if I can get that to show on the screen. So, this is the basic turn on. And um, because we have this set up uniquely, every time you turn it on, it's going to give you this warning screen that says switched to line out successfully. Please be careful of the volume. Press OK to continue. So we press the middle. And basically what that's telling you is that this thing is playing at full volume. And so please be careful if you have headphones plugged directly in. In our case, we do not. We are plugging this into the control box, which then controls the volume. So this is already on pause because we've been playing it before. And so the middle button is going to start and stop it. If um, we look at some of these other controls, we have reverse, forward, and when you tap it once, it's going to make a song jump to the next one. When you press and hold, it's going to forward it or move it faster. Here is an index, and this is the reverse button. This one goes up a level, and this is what we use most of the time to get to where we need to be. So we'd hit that and it goes up a level. I'm gonna hit it again, it goes up another level, and it'll bring us all the way up to the main directory, which is seen here. The main directory can be used with the scroll wheel. I find it easier, because it's so sensitive, to use the left and right buttons on the bottom. So, basically we can use the left and right button, hit the center button when it's uh, the one you want. So. This, this one on the far one is the now playing. And we go back up. And the next one is categories. So if things are, are um, installed with certain 
artists or albums or something like that, you can look it up that way. Um, next one is the browse files, and this is the one I use most for accessing the information. So August Tara is a composer, David Gibson, I Am University, Matthew Cosell, and my stuff. And um, if we go into mine, we have basic beats, crystal caverns, sleep spectrum, and themes. And so basic beats is going to give you binaural beats in 20, 30, and 45 minute segments. And so there's several different varieties. There's easy and um, energetic. And so within bed beats easy, 20 minutes, we have no background, we have rain background, river background, and thunder background. And then it goes on to 30 minute and so on and so on. So there's a great deal of variety just in the basic beats. Now all of um, all of the music I create have a great deal of binaural beats. We use the binaural beats because they are so 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 effective with uh, remapping your brain and also they work really well with the vibrations. Crystal Caverns is a unique one I made. It's one hour and 11 minutes long and it brings you through um, a huge amount of different um, variations in binaural beats, in um, tones and things like that. Uh, so it's a really great one to listen to. S sleep Spectrum is if you need to go to go to sleep and you're having a hard time doing it. Uh, that one is also one hour and 11 minutes long. It will uh, be really gentle at the end. Themes are the last ones that I created. And um, what themes are is um, they give you, again, 20, 30, or 45 minute program files. And there's one called Asia, Beach, Fairy Rings, India, Jungle, Nepal, Space, Tibet. So you're getting an idea here that they're themed. Beach is by far the most soothing. Uh, it is uh, everyone loves it and uh, it's one of my favorites and uh, fairy rings is really fun you know a lot of these that I created I will bring a person into a heightened state in the first um, five minutes or so and what that does is makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable so when we drop we really drop nice and deep so it's a great effective tool to bring somebody into a much deeper state and so fairy rings, what that does is brings you through the internal states of your mind, through doorways in your mind until you get to the fairy rings. And then it opens up this big, beautiful door into this wonderful uh, soundscape. India takes you to India, where you're going to be praying at a temple. Uh, jungle is the most aggressive one that I did, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's not for the easily frightened. Um, we created that just you know to have some fun and put some binaural beats in the in the mix nepal takes you to uh, nepal where you get to go to a temple again space is really fun uh, there's a power failure inside space where you know you get sh shot off in a rocket ship and a few minutes later there's a power failure on your ship and then you have to get it going again and and then it brings you into this amazing soundscape where we actually used Tibetan bowls that are keyed to the different planets frequencies we used a lot of solfagio and all these beautiful uh, luscious tones in there and Tibet again is another one where there is a lot of chanting and um, for some people it might be too much Asia brings you to Asia it's the most deep vibrational one there is and so I often use that one as a vibrational therapy um, just, you know, like making the massage table really vibrate. And so it's a really big workout for the transducers, but it feels really good. And it holds you in this state of suspension. It doesn't really let you go anywhere and it doesn't take you anywhere. So it's, it's a really interesting effect. And um, you kind of are held in this suspension. So it's a fun one to do. You know, try them all out. Have fun with them. And... Um, Let's go to the next uh, file. We have settings or play settings. 
And so <clears throat> I set these up automatically to have a play mode of going through each song. And so you can do one song. Okay. You can do one song, you can do straight through and stop. You can do a random, see it is sensitive, um, or going straight through. So we do straight through. And the resume mode allows you to do a position or a s off or a song. And I always go to a song uh, where it starts it off at the song in the beginning. Playback gap. I don't like to have a, fade, um, a playback gap at all, meaning from one song to the next. I prefer to have none because there are ones that are very short and what this will do is lead into the very next one without a pause. Max volumes at 100% it has to be because this is going directly into the control box which controls the volume. And um, none of these other ones you really have to worry about. Do not change the equalizer settings because we need things very flat in order to get the appropriate uh, information from the sound. Line out mode, um, it's on a fixed level, meaning it's at 100%. And we can change the fixed level right here. Seems like it's overly loud for everybody. Ugh, give me a minute. The electronics like to play with me. So we can do negative three, negative six, or zero. Negative three is half the volume negative six is double the half so it gets really quiet really quick so we leave it at zero balance don't need to change that play through folders absolutely this will allow you to keep going through uh, folders because sometimes you might even fall asleep for 45 minutes to two hours or something and you'll be on some other song and you won't know it update media library automatically happens which is a good thing um, if you ever wanted to update the the sound and put more stuff on there, you can. Bluetooth, we turned off. We do not use the Bluetooth, we can't. If you have something Bluetooth and you want to hook it up to this, it will no longer work with the uh, crystal bit. So it's either one or the other. Either plug it in or you don't. Um, and also the audio quality is a little not as good on Bluetooth. And um, key lock settings, you can change those, and it's in the information manual. All this other stuff is just, you know, minor stuff. Um, screen timeout, it turns off after 60 seconds. You can change that to keep it on permanently. It's going to kill the battery really quick. Um, so, you know, it's up to you what you want to change that to. Brightness level, again, if you're at full strength, it's going to kill the battery pretty much quicker. So, Leaving it at six, it's pretty good. Idle standby <clears throat> means that it will go into standby when nothing's happening. Now, what that also means is after five minutes, it'll shut off. So it's a great way to conserve the battery. So you can come back and it'll still be there. Sleep timer, we don't use. And um, select output on the bottom is it basically switches between the headphones and the line out. So that's it. And um, let's get to opening. <clears throat> Here's your micro SD adapter. And basically this comes with it. It's sitting in the control box carry case. And so there's a little slot in it. And what that's gonna do is you're gonna stick the micro SD into it. I need to turn this off to do this. And it says, see you. So we pull this out. This is how I get these out. So you see that little tiny thing? So that's your micro SD card. You would stick that in here and then put it into your computer. And then you can read files, transfer music, onto this or transfer music from this over to your computer to use for a secondary system. So there we have it. And again this needs to click into place. Okay 